Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint this botanical cosmos flower. Now today's kind of a technique tune-up which we haven't done in a while. We're just going to talk about how you construct flowers, how you um, kind of move even a little bit beyond the traceable. Now on Facebook and I've got to put it up on the page and around social media I've been sharing the steps of the drawing all the way full through a fully rendered drawing. Um, so if you're interested in the drawing, uh, taking that all the way to a finished pencil sketch, that is out there for you. We're going to go through some of it today and then I'm going to show you how to paint it. We are working on the 1264 Fabriano mixed media paper. I'm using this a lot for the color mixing class and for studies and for technique things. If you're looking for a nice heavy paper that takes pencil and watercolor and acrylic, this does a nice kind of work through because it's 120 pounds and has a good finish and good sizing. How is everybody today? Really good. There's really like good? so many, so many people saying hello. <laughs> they're saying they're they're greeting everyone. It's like you know the first thing everyone's excited that the show is starting and they're ready to to see each other. Well, this week we've got some flowers. And the next week we've got some feathers, and then pretty soon after that we're going to get into color theory, color schemes, color mixing. You know, it may seem that we cover a couple of things repeatedly, but actually it's because we'll go deeper and deeper into a dive or explain it from a different place. Because I think that uh, heading into Acrylic April this year, Acrylic April, the 30-day painting program, um, having a strong sense of color mixing will make that program easier this year. Make it more fun, more enjoyable for everybody. It's so good to see everyone. Yeah. All right. So you can see the finished work that I'm going to be moving to. I'm very excited. I see Sheila and... Pocket Ellen and Trish and Ashley and Deb, uh, who has the longest name, Deb from Genome Thread Artistry. I'm thinking you uh, do demos for Genomi. <laughs> I do quilting shows on occasion. Not like do them. Like I'm not like I walk them and Could purchase be. things. I'm a consumer. <laughs> we consume the machines. I lightly quilt and I lightly thread paint. As a, but I like to go by and see the masters do their work, and it's just a lot of fun for me. If you're looking for something creative to do in your life, all of you out there in youtuber -y land, um, check out a quilting show. Quilting events are really interesting, just generally. Okay, so I'm going to pull this aside. Oh, sorry. That's another thing. See my other work, whether you wanted to or not. I told you I work in this. All right, so I'm going to fold this. It's got nice perforations so I can pull it easily. And I'm going to put it to the side over here. And then I will turn this page. Turn the page. Turn. I should pull this too. Everything's photographed already. So you can leave everything in a sketchbook or you can pull it out to a portfolio. I tend to pull it out to a portfolio. It's just easier for me to do in general. So I'm going to move you down here and I'm going to move that up there. And now I have everything. Okay. So I've got my place to start and I'm on a tipped angle, you guys. So I do have to deal with the tipped angle. Um, let's talk about how we construct flowers. Now in my construction, I have my um, pencil sharpener and this handles my um, jumbo pencils, my color pencils and my graphite pencils. It's got three little openings. You just want something like that. Um, and I got that one because it's pink. I've got some gummy erasers um they usually come in a boring gray but uh, i like it when they come in primaries so i've got that going there and i have my sketching pencils now these aren't the uh, water soluble graphite pencils but if you already had those you had some of the credit colors that we had in previous kits or things they would work here really really well and i'm gonna just pull one and do a little sketch so i'm gonna do a 2b which is a sort of a medium lead, the kind, just a little bit softer than you might think of as in a school pencil. By the way, if all you have is an HB pencil from school, the yellow kind, this will work at this stage too. And we're going to talk about how flowers are constructed and how that helps us paint them. Because one of the things that's hard for new painters is getting the turned petals. There's a there's kind of a, a break in our brain about when we're trying to get the perspective of the flower. And because we get lost in the petals, we don't see the whole flower. Do you know what I mean? We get, we get a little do. like, we, we like kind of psych ourselves out a little bit. And so this is a way to work around that where we use things like gesture and the way objects hold in space 
to be able to guide ourselves through that so we don't get in our own way. Um, Can't see the flowers through the petals. So to okay, speak. what do you use artist tape for? Um, well, we've got a bunch of videos, Lindsay, with artist tape, but generally it's to create straight lines or to mask off areas and it doesn't tear your paper or canvas. And that's why we specifically use artist tape in general. Now, in the flower, you're going to notice this one is facing left and this one is, huh? Yeah, let's call it step one. Yeah, oh, because we'll make a mini book of this. This is fantastic. Okay. Good, and I made some digital sketches, so that'll help them in the mini book creation. Okay. okay, so we got a flower facing this way and a flower sort of facing this way, but sort of us. Do you need that drawing I, reference picture up? No. Okay. You don't. You, you, let me know well, when I mean, you want if the you step. If you want it, you could do with the circles. Uh, the it step would, step one. Yeah. No, no, no. You had those. You had those little uh, four pictures. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about that. I, we, we'll go through like step one and like two, those? but we won't necessarily. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'll be in the mini book which releases 7 to 14 days after the show for free download so I know I'm going to put a flower in this space and the first thing that I'm going to want to do is put in the center of my flower right I'm going to put in the center right and then because I want this to be sort of off center and the petals to be curled I'm going to do an ellipse where the side of my center of the flower circle is very close to the edge of my ellipse now, depending on how deep I want that flower to face, I'm going to come back and I'm going to just very lightly kind of give myself a little stem line. And I'll curve that down. It's so very lightly. I'm light at this stage, guys. We're not working dark, right? And then I'm going to join the petals up to the stem and that's going to help me orient the flower on that side and then I know I've got another little little bit coming off here and that this one's pretty easy this is just a ball so not that stressful for me you can kind of see that there now I want to want this one to be a little bit taller and I'm going to go ahead and put a center here right and its circle it's going to be a little more kind of faced to us it's because the lips is here instead of just a solid round circle because instead of being a nice perfect little pie circle it's a bit of an ellipse it does help us face the flower a little bit away from us as you'd want to and I will go ahead and pull down a little stem here and then also if if this flower is here then i'm going to want to put the other little ball up there i just don't want to make them symmetrical i want them to be a little off center from each other okay now once we have that in let's uh let's talk about that a little bit getting those cylindricals in this is a little bit drawing i know it and i usually never make you draw drawing is fun right this is kind of the process. This is a light dip your toe in the pool of if I were to draw something, if I were to draw, draw something, um, what would that look like for me? You know, what would that be like for me? Uh, John, hard to see lines on a phone. Yes, it is it, hard it, to see lines what? on a phone, which is why we've got the sketch up there and you've got the reference sketch the other question this is how light what you're seeing is the truth you should be sketching this light super light it's, it's super it's light barely, and you can just barely see it on there but i mean like if i adjust the color down then it just i mean like here actually i'll do that or before we just go on to the real next step. quick john will adjust the color down just, but the reason that we're showing it to you as light as it is is because that's how light you, you see need like to guide you can yourself. see how everything else gets dark around it as i try to bring out that's just how light those are you want to be very light i'm not pressing down hard on my pencil if you've got kids who are sketching with you right now I know some of you guys do that's the big thing to uh, for them to work on actually for even us the grown-ups is keeping the weight it's real hard from going to... through our body into our paper if I were to make some lines up here most people sketch at that depth that's too deep so if you're trying to figure out how to lighten up what you're going to want to do is do some practices where you press hard and make dark lines and then lighten them up that's how you can work on that. See how light you can make them. Go from light and then lighten them up. See if you can do that. And then in a line, I'll do this up here still. I'll do it up up here in the corner. 
in a motion line. Sometimes it's hard to lighten your pencil up. So up here you see me go light and then I go dark. I want you in that exercise to feel how that kinetic weight engages your muscles. All right. You can even come back further on the pencil. Sometimes that can help you lighten up. See, when the further back you move, it might help you lighten up. Just push hard and then release. And see if you can't lighten and darken that line. That's the space that you're trying to work in and you're trying to work in your lightest line. Little drawing tip there. For, let's step to it. Step to it. So once we know our cylindrical kind of shape. Hmm. So the question that was in there that I, that I almost missed was. Um, yeah, move this even closer to my Is wife. there anything you need to do to prepare the paper for no. acrylic? Yeah, this paper is ready to go. That's why I recommended this one. Can you use Canson Mixed Media for this? I don't see why not. If it's over 110 pounds, you should be able to use it with no difficulty. If it's 90, you have to be careful about how wet you get the paper. But you can always put a piece of printer paper between your Canson paper and the next sheet. And, and you know... It, it, it seems a high level question is around paper and as long as it's thick enough yeah like you're you using want it to be heavy enough yeah. like bristol can take it bristol papers generally can take it um and you know 90 pounds I, I just is really just the lightest i would go 110 pound or higher makes it just a lot easier because then you're not as worried about moisture but you want something that has just enough tooth to take your pencil here and enough to do your paint and this kind of is a nice range for that Canson is a good company. Fab Fabriano is a good company. Um, uh, Strathmore does some good stuff. So there's some options out there for you in the multimedia space. All right. Now, I'm going to come here. I'm going to try to use the other camera, which gets a little bit of a different deflection of angle, so I can adjust it a little different because the light plays off of it a little differently. So that's why it can. Yeah. Let me see what I can do here to. I am going to I come right this, here and but... start to talk a little bit about my petals. All right, we want to start talking about those little petals, and I'm just sketching those out. You know, kind of let's pull that one out a little bit longer. And we'll pull out his little friend. And then here, these petals will curl up, right, and you can kind of have... A little bit of the curl up the petals that will hit that stem so that's how I'm getting those petals that bend forward this works for poppies this works for anything and that's just where I've got to sort of showcase that forward motion I'm gonna come here and I'm going to do a similar thing I'm gonna segment out the petals you can always sort of bend and everything that's sort of fun creating little ripples in them I like to uh, I like to play with them, and because the ellipse helps you guide how long or short you make your petals, it actually helps you face the flower. Now, eventually, I promise you, what happens when you're painting is you can just do this in your head. If you practice this enough, if you just will sit and do like five pages of petal facing, like if you just grabbed all the Cosmos flower references online that you can find and practice facing the flowers different directions then your brain will start to hold that information so when you go to paint it you won't need to do this detailed sketching that's why um artists call this exercises so much better than sit-ups though right right wants to do a sit-up not me but we know that Gonna bring this out here. And I'm trying to just move along a little slowly with you guys so that you can sort of see this come in. You know, um, you guys can pull flowers from your gardens, just anything, anything, anything to do this work with. All right, and then just do that down there. So that's that step. How are we doing? Um, really good here. They would like you to do a close up tour around the canvas if you could. And I will do a sip. Well, I was, I was, that's why I was over here earlier. Mm. So 
I had this this camera I angled a little different so you guys could see uh, it, it's it's adjusted a little different. It's darker on this side so you can see some of those lighter lines. Now, if you're doing, um, I'll do a little cleanup now and we'll do a little cleanup later. Little eraser tip if you are, and again, this is for your practice. This isn't, you're not putting this on your wall. This is your practice. But when I take my gummy eraser, I work out, I knead out a little bit of it. See, I'm kneading out a little bit. Letting them see that little part over there real quick. Right, I'm kneading out a little bit. These are so much fun. By the way, if you have children, hide these from them. Doesn't hurt them. They're not they dangerous, but all, they will steal They turn them all into of bunnies them. and gnomes and all sorts of cute, cute little creatures. But you can see it's just, I'm just barely. And the reason that we like these kinds of erasers over other kinds is because they don't leave eraser shavings. Right, so if you're just trying to clean up a drawing, the guidelines on your drawings, they are a very preferable. They also don't greatly disturb the sizing on your paper. And when you're erasing, you'll get a real good chance. And I'll show you, let's, do, let's go up here and see if we can adjust that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna press hard and then to light, and I'm gonna show okay. you, I'm gonna do it right here. And I'm not even doing you can see I'm just lightening up, and then as I lighten up and I come out, as light as I can, okay? Now, when I go to erase, do you see how the light pencil marks come up so easily, but I can really work at? Yeah. It's What it's done is it's scored the paper. My pressure is so deep, it scored the paper. Now, now, now see, keep in mind, what you guys are seeing is actually, this camera right now sees really good. So if, when you're looking at it from up here, that's kind of what you would normally expect from the paper. It will mostly disappear. But when you get, when you get down on it, and you can see it leaves little dents. Well, no, but the you, graphite, I can't even get the graphite yeah, out. So, yeah. And when I run my nail on it, I can feel the ridges. That's what happens when you press hard. Now, there are times in a paper you will do that intentionally to create that ridge for the rendering. When you're working with me or you're an adult and you're working with me and you're wondering like what's happening in my drawings, that's the first place I would look is I would look how much weight are you putting in. If you are having an impossible time, if you have mobility issues of any kind, uh, um, uh, hand control issues of any kind, what you're gonna wanna buy is a drawing bridge right so it's a bridge like a bridge that goes over the water it's a drawing bridge and what that does is that sits over your paper and you can rest your hand on it quite heavily and put your weight into your hand and it will help you lighten up here if and control your hand motion um if you don't have like loose armed control and that's a lot of artists and that's why they invented those and our ability to control our muscles changes over time too. Yeah. So that's not an unusual thing. And there are grip adapters if there's any um, for your pencils that you can get to help you um, have a better grip if grasping is an issue. So don't ever feel like these things are hard for me so I can't draw. There have been amazing artists that have come before you and have solved these challenges and have made it easier for you as you go. All right, are you ready for the next step? I feel like I'm ready for the next step. There we go. All right. Okay. And at some point, you should do a port for class on portfolios. I was asking about that a little bit earlier. Oh, to put a portfolio together like for Like how school? to do that and stuff. Like just in general, I think your okay. thoughts on portfolios. That's deep so, class, yeah. man. But th that's another good one we should talk about, though. <laughs> it is. It is a good one we should talk about. It is a good class. It is. I'm going to need to get a little round brush. i got to find one of my rounds that I think is going to do a good job. This is a nice one, and I'm going to put my glasses on because now vision has become... Oh, wait. I'm going to draw again. I have one more drawing thing that I want to kind of work out. So the other little drawing thing that sometimes at this stage I want to work out because we can get lost when we're painting and then we're putting leaves everywhere and then they're not where we really want them to be is that sometimes I'm going to take a little over here come between these two and wind something right there. Wind here. I'm gonna come down here and wind here. Definitely don't put your stems on the same side, like stagger them. And 
And by taking this time here, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that when I'm putting in my leaves, right? I'm gonna kind of, I'm, I can do these pretty easy with my paint, but I can still sort of guide myself, like where am I gonna wanna put some leaves? Where are those gonna go? How will they go? You know, and you can kind of sketch that out and imagine that at this stage, creating some very nice stepping so that you're not doing it in the stroke, feeling a little overwhelmed, you know, on where things are maybe gonna go. And I do like doing that at this stage. I'm gonna add a little leaf that's there. And we'll pull one off here and here and here now and the, here. The side screen is darker for you guys to see. Yeah. So, that's so again, why it's so I'm light and you know why. And that's why the dark drawing is there for you guys. That's why I put the dark drawing there. All right, next step. Now I'm going to get into my glasses and my paint. And Cynthia was saying how much she appreciates how easy the books are put together. And Trish was saying that she really appreciates how he, how he explained it well, all. So and the dark drawings guys. will be in the books because I knew that these are hard to see. And so I, I think ones. I'll do a graphic about how you light it needs right to there. be. So, oh, no, I'll yeah, do a digital oh, yeah, graphic about good. light pencil so you guys can really see that and why that's true. Now... Much like I can remove chalk later, I can remove pencil lines later after my acrylic paint is dried. So I'm not really that that sort of stressed about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and a little of my cad red, make some orange, and add some burnt sienna to it. I'm going to come off the back of my flower. See if I can adjust this back up a little bit now. And I'm just going to bring a little line down. And so in this, when we're doing this, we're going to be looking at how multicolored stems are in, in flowers, but how they, they have, you know, green in them, red in them, all kinds of colors in them. Um, that where joints happen, there's discoloration, sometimes red, sometimes purple. You know, and this kind of observation helps us in our bigger paintings. You know, I'm adding water to my brush just to improve the flow out of paint. The paper, I can't underbind on here because the paper pulls the pigment in. So even if I did light, 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 light washes like in a watercolor style, I wouldn't be harmed by that in any way. I'm also going to want to... I think I will want to. It's so funny you make it like clang, 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 clang. Oh, from the clang, clang, from the glasses. Yeah. Oh no, it's I so, might no, it's no, my... it's fine. It just think it's funny. It's like wind chimes. I was wondering where is that coming? Oh, it's your thing. You had your your um. You know, it's like a wizard staff that has all the magic stuff hanging off of mm -hmm. it. <laughs> You got magical doodads. Now, if you have the studio space and a standing easel, this is even better to do with a standing easel and to stand back and work the back of your brush um, to get that better. If you are a sitting artist, then you would probably practice from here sitting. All right, so now I have those little stems sort of worked out. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I know in the center of my flowers, I'm going to start with just this brown. Uh, baby Steps Baker says, sorry I'm late. What is to underbind? So acrylic paint um, sometimes will have trouble binding to the surface if there's not enough polymer to adhere. And that happens sometimes if you over wet it and it, it, not as much in pro paint, actually. We found if you let it dry long enough in pro paint, you can do some very watery effects. But in student paints, it might not stick to the surface. But on paper, the paper is the binder. That's true of your watercolor, and that's true of your acrylic paint. 
All right, so there we go. Just putting that in. I like this uh, so far. Just a nice little layout. It's a nice little way to go, right? Now, let's call that a step because we're not trying to like whip through. I'm gonna sip my soda. And if, if there's questions that I missed, I will take those while we're doing step five. So uh, Brooke was just saying, I've been struggling with flowers for years. Any tips on getting better with flowers? Practice them. Practice, practice, practice. Flower? Yeah. Get a book like this yeah. and practice all the flowers. Draw them, draw them, and then paint them. And then draw them and paint them. Because the drawing teaches you about the structure and the painting um, then become stronger from that knowledge because you'll see how you bent or pe peeled the petals. That's why I gave you that step-by-step -step on the drawing on how to do this. Drawing, drawing, drawing. If I draw something and then I paint it, I do better. All right, I'm going to come here and take a little of my... Make sure, and make sure you talk about your brushes as you're going. Black through. and green. All right, this is a number four textura round. I want something with a good point that's a detail that isn't going to make me work to, the, to get into the space. I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, I'm going to tap up and down because if we observe the flower, what do, what do we see? We see like not a smooth surface, do we? It's a little, it's a little bit of a, of a darker surface. Kind of pull this around. Now I will be thicker with the shading, you know, definitely on this side. Then on that side. Oftentimes references, if you're getting isolated flowers on white backgrounds, which is the easiest to work from, often references um, are lit in a studio and can have two or three light sources. So it's not really one of those things, like a lot of times you guys like to be like, where's the light source? Could be a couple different directions. That's not the important thing right now for this. The important thing right now for this is to see where is my light, where is my shadow on the object. Don't worry about where is my light coming in because then you'll start by rote going, well, then there's a shadow here, there's a shadow here, there's a shadow here, instead of just observing where it is, right? And you guys just want to observe where it is. I'm going to darken that here, and then I'll come into a little bit of maybe uh, my brown. So I'm sort of darkening this back stem. That's sort of nice, right? And I definitely, definitely will get a little bit of my yellow and green together. As I'm working on my stem, I like to have that a bit. Right, we're adding some of that little value, some of that thought. You can work that through. I can go more into my brown, more into my green. Those things are all fine. But I definitely, definitely want to be able to see what's going on there. The pigmentation of the plant. Now around these, I will put some little stems out, but I kind of want to put the flowers in before I try to do that. If I want this to be in front of this, then I have to make this line continual now. See how that pushed that right there behind? That's how you do that. And we're just adding a little bit of the green now while we're here, while we're thinking about it. Right? And notice how some of the stem is brown and some of the stem is green and you're working both of those. I'm going to rinse out a little bit. Now into the center of the flowers is fairly light and I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and gosh, just a smidge of that green. Mostly yellow. And some white. I'm going to come here. Do an upward little stroke from the petals out.
If you get it overly green, you can come back in with white later, so don't feel like you're stuck. All right, so we're just starting to put that center in, talk about that center. Might grab a little of that green right there. I'm just adding a little chlorophyll to the center of the plant. Just working that in. So this is like you get your reference and there's so many varieties of these flowers. Like there's some that are dark purple. There are some that are, you know, I'm going to come in from this side with that a little bit of that green on those. Notice that I'm curving the stroke towards the left over on the left side, towards the right over on the right side. I'm following it. I'm going to continue going like that. I think they're downstairs. I think they might get it because it's groceries, I believe. Continue here. That's UPS. All right. So in the flower here, we're going to add that a little bit of that. It's to me anyway. Oh. It was to you anyway. Yep, there's a package. I wouldn't UPS. put those here. I don't put that that the yellow there. And I can then come back through if I want to and add some white. You can use the paper as your white, but I like to sort of paint it through because it helps me think about the way a petal is. I do this at the Art Sherpa Retreat. We do these types of studies because it's like super helpful to your overall skill set. <laughs> I love to do them in watercolor. They do make you stronger as a painter in every way. And you do want to do them, you know, as often as you can think of it. I'm adding a little bit of that white paint. Let's call that a step. See if I missed any questions. All right. We're just... Going along in our flower. I think we're okay right now. I was just uh Okay. Oh uh oh, Cara, uh see here. Carly says I could watch this type of video forever. <laughs> These types of, and, and there's a lot of comments that this type of, of flower video is very useful. Yeah. So and practice, practice, practice. That's Sometimes the technique tune ups are what we need. You can paint loose flowers better if you paint them in this structure. It's a weird thing, how they go back and forth. So we're gonna make sure that we keep these sort of little this sort of jam going. That was the other question. What uh, mini? What are the mini books? What were you talking about? And where can you get them? Mini books are downloadable PDFs that are books. Uh, hopefully, eventually, they'll be on Kindle and for uh, available and bound on yeah, Amazon. We're, we're working on that right now. Um, but right now, you just download them from the website. It's each step written out in instructions. The instructions match the video and the steps, and they have step-by-step -step photos and those extra tips. That way. You have a layered path to learning. I don't, I don't know, like, learning styles. I think, you know, I, the more tools I can give you to learn, the better off you are. You know, so if you've got visual and you've got the book and you've got the auditory and, and we're doing, well, we've got everything. So whatever the learning style is for you, we got you. Got you. Got you. All right. So I'm going to continue on here. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to take my quinacridone and my cad red together. I just really, really like them as a color set. And I'm going to add a little yellow to it. And I'm going to dip my brush in some water. I don't really need to change brushes because, honestly, this number four Raphael is a pretty decent brush. And it's going to help me through. And we're going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to come around and not notice how fine that line is on that structure. Pretty fine line. Right. I'm doing this because I have pigment all through the flower here. And this little line can help me uh, orient that. And I can even kind of detail in the delicacy of the flower at this point.
So on top of, you know, am I, am I turning it or am I doing that? There we go. That's looking pretty good. Another place to put this is I can kind of come here at the tip. No. And make little short marks. We'll come in and detail those out later, but these should be short because this is a closed bud. It's not going to have um, lots of open petals on it. And I'm just putting that pink there. I will be layering that out later. Not going to worry about taking it too far down here. I've got the yellow. And that's also because every flower will be different. That's another thing when you're practicing and you paint out and you grab a bunch of references, like go to Pixabay, go to Paint My Photo if you want. Uh, references where uh, the photographers have given permission for you to use them. Um, though I think in education, as long as you're not, you know, stealing someone else's work and putting it online for your personal learning, it doesn't really matter. It's just when it's out in the world. Um, but if you, if you want to do that, that's what I do is I do uh, paint my photo or Pixabay or you license the work. That is um, a very, very good way to go. I'm going to... Kind of pull that there. Now, I can come in with my black. The other color you could use is ultramarine blue. And I'm going to take my mix, my Cad Red Quinacridone mix, and make a darker color for where the underside of the petal is showing and it folds over. That's how we're going to fold a petal. Another place I can put it, if I have a ruffle, and I want to show that ruffle, I just do a joining kind of line coming in. I wanted to show you guys that a couple places. See how I've ruffled the petal and it kind of pulls in? That's how you get that done. Pulling that back. Pulling that dark shadow back on these close to me petals. Now another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come right into that green. And go from the stem sort of underneath. Kind of like blending up into those petals where that chlorophyll has maybe gotten in there a little bit. We'll come back with some pink highlights and everything later, but this just sets us up pretty well. Alrighty. Now, rinse out. You've got your Cad Red. Your Quinacridone. A little bit of yellow in there, right? So it's peachy. And I'm going to start mixing some white in. On the toe of the brush, I'm going to follow the directionality of the growth of the petal and paint those in. Hmm. They want the other reference image back. Ah, the painting one. Yeah. yeah. Have you been up there on drawing inferences? <laughs> Boop. <laughs> so sorry, guys. There Thank we you, go. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for letting us know, Winnie. We're always really grateful because there we go. See how I'm pulling that in and you can see those lines being so irregular and pulling that in? That's an important part. The curve to the line can be a big deal. Now right here, if I add a little darkness, see how I'm coming in with the magenta? I can show that little curl on a petal. So that's a thing you can do if you want to like show a shadow uh, on the forward side of the petal that's bending maybe. That's a thing that you can do.
And we're just getting this first little bit in. Now I definitely want to get into this lighter color and kind of come here and yes, I've got my shadow, but I want to show some lightness here at the edge. That's nice. So it's still turned, but is bright. Curving down, curving. The curve of the brush strokes helps me design the flower. If I curve it up like this, you can make that petal feel like it's bent back. Look, I'll do it again. So now that petal was bent back a little bit. Get into my white over here with a little bit of that yellow green and you can see I get a really light color. And I'll work back into that pink that I had. All right, so that was the yellow green from earlier. Adding a lot more white and my flower pink. And come in and touch some of that in. Look at that, had some exaggerations there on that nice little ruffle. Come in on a little pink here. Detail up that little that little bit. Now I definitely want to come down into here and play a little bit. Wipe off my brush. I do that a lot on my paper towel. I wipe off my brush. Little light marks and they curve the direction of the bud. So if the line is curving up, then I curve those lines up. At the center it straightens out. Kind of works out there. Come back up here. Maybe another little light little smattering. All right, let's call that a step just so we can get where we're. All right, continuing on. I'm gonna take a little bit of my red and my yellow together. Get a little brown into it on this side. I'm going to start talking about the center of that plant there. I'll let that dry for a bit. I'm going to get into my white. Come back and kind of just very lightly brush out. See how that really pulls the petals together? Look at that go. It's fun to do these. You get just as much relaxation and chill mental space from just doing little flower studies as you do from whole big, doing whole big paintings. If you're painting just for chill, this works just as well. All right, look at that. Isn't that looking good? Okay, now I'm going to come in, I'm going to rinse out and grab a little bit more brown and black, but this time I'm just chocolating up the brown. Kind of working that in there. Go into the yellow and orange over here. And I'm just half toning that in, guys. I'm just half toning that in. Ok, 
creating kind of a nice little transition here. A little bit of a darker kind of little curved shadow there. I'll have to do highlights up here. That's going to be super critical. You know, in a minute, that's going to be a huge deal. But right now I can go there. All right, how are we doing? Do we have any questions? And a step. Yes. Okay. We're okay, almost done. So question first. Practice um, almost done. So Stephanie says, uh, Cinnamon, we've been talking about photorealism flowers uh, on a Facebook post earlier this week. How would you go about doing photorealistic flowers like this? Like this or? Oh, so let's say you wanted it, it, to take you, this to photorealism. Is it just what it, is that, a, is, is that a different kind of approach? Is it? What's the difference? Yeah, between... it's, so when you look at something in photorealism, right? Yeah. One, I would do a much better pencil study at the beginning, and I would get the value completely tuned in. And then um, it is about objects having space and and shadow, so it'd be about catching every little bit of highlight and shadow. And whenever you're talking fo photorealism, add twenty hours to the project. Again, like one of the things I'd like to add to that is oftentimes I know I have like my experience of watching and witnessing is that it oftentimes requires a high level of knowledge of the subject matter. It really in does. In order to achieve photorealism because you need to know why it is that way. It's sometimes sometimes people are good enough where they can just see it and do it. Well, no, but there's but a whole but there's what it's, ten thousand hours. Of, so what yeah. you're really doing is if, if you're trying to make us like say we were trying to while we did this the illusion of a raspberry sitting on top of the paper, right? That would be about a careful observation of the raspberry, the light, the details, the hairs, the micro details. And you know raspberries so well. Reflected light, uh, the way it casts and... a shadow. Yeah, you'd want to really be doing studies. And it's, it's for most people, here is realism, <laughs> right? Yeah. Going into photorealism is about really stepping back and evaluating your craft from the beginning and doing study after study after study and sitting in it and proceeding very slowly and meticulously it's 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 a it is a practice of patience it is a practice of observation it is a pra it's it's like literally remember mork and mini coming into that it's about slowing your brain down and yourself down and really being in in the reference or in what it is and noticing all those little elements that build it up and that's right? i think that's what but I this is this is the start you get this you nail this yeah you nail getting things as you see them then move on to photorealism move on to it and and we can do that but when you're talking about really getting into things realistically you've got to get here does that make sense you've got to be able to start seeing yep. that the underside of your pedal is, is shaded and that how the pedal turns and those kinds of things become significantly more important. I'm going to take okay, a little bit so of my yellow step. and green. Now we're on the next step. We're not on the next step? Now we're stepping. Okay. We're going to take a little bit of my yellow and green and add some brown to it. So... On something like this, if you're like, oh, I want to work on those skills, then get references and see how many of the details in those references you can capture, right? Beyond like shape, form, things like that. I'm going to just pull this out. So we're just creating the little leaf shapes. That's another thing when you're looking at flower studies and you're doing botanical studies, what you're doing is you're observing things like how are the leaves shaped? Important stuff. All right, we want to do that. So, but I think the biggest obstacle to anyone doing photorealism is always investing in the time and study. Um, their fine art tips was really big. I don't think that they are as big as they were. I'm going to put this pedal in front of the stem this time. Um, but they were just a master in the photorealism space. And they did as much of a tutorial as I think you can do in that space because, you know, they might have 100 hours in a single project. But they would sort of show you the breakdown of it. And one of the things that you will notice so much about them is their, let's pull a petal out, 
is there just attention to the detail and and I I sometimes notice that they choose to build the project like a printer would like it's complete to here it's complete to here it's complete to here it's complete to here whereas you know as a painter we're building up layers and you know kind of observing values he is constructing it in just such a different methodology I'm continuing to just press down notice that I press down and then yep. release and I'm I am kind of trying to make these little petals at the edge look a little whimsical you know in different sort of spaces I like that very much I'm going to add some of this to the back stem but if you just start with just doing studies and you just keep asking yourself more and more and more, what do I see? What do I see here? I think what you will find is that um, your realism just in general will improve because you'll start to observe light, reflected light, hue and form and gesture more faithfully. And then building up those skills is sort of the, the path to that. You know, and then also you got to realize that your photorealism is somebody else's something else. That's another thing too. What, when people think like there's a specific art term that is photorealism. Yep. Right. That that is, you know. And then there's hyperrealism. Those are specific art terms that refer refer to a very specific set of techniques. But in a student, they may just mean to make it look three dimensional or more realistic in any level. That's another thing too, is is that we're all kind of thinking about those things in that way. I'm going to put the stem in front, but I'll just paint this out and then you can see how we're just kind of getting that base level of green in. Pressing down and releasing. I'm still just on this number four round. Notice that my leaves are never just straight. Right, they, there is an S curve or some type of curve or motion in any of them. These flowers are in motion. They have the gestures. Well, the gesture matters, my friend. Gesture matters so much in a painting because it's what gives it energy. Keeps it from being just totally static and boring. And again, we're just like running through here and, oh, that was plain green and I don't want that. If I do that, I can just come in and paint something else, paint it out. Here we go. All right. You notice how I just press and release and that brush create does like a lot of the work for me in my leaf. That's the nice thing about a round brush. And I came in and added some little green to that because that's what we do. Let's roll and load, which is where I roll my brush in the paint to load it. So say I go scrape, scrape, and then I roll it and I load the tip. That's how I keep that going. You may find your paper is very absorbent of your paint and that's okay. You're not asking it to be different than that. All right. Uh, 
Uh, Stephanie Nolan um, is asking about the color mixing course that's coming up. The first uh, one that I have posted that you can see is the one on the first. Um, that is how to read and make a color wheel. I may break it up. I may break it up to how to read the color wheel and make the color wheel. Um, it's a deep look at that. We've got to understand functionally how our tools work so we understand how we're mixing those colors and why so that when we create our own palette wheel, we know how to use them to create our triadics, to use our color schemes, how to get our hues, our tints, our tones, our shades, how to just sort of work through that whole process. And I'm, I'm like releasing weird little one minute videos of like how to make purple with red and green, like really weird stuff on top of that. So don't miss the shorts in, in the month of March. Oh, can I do something real quick? Hmm. I wanted to uh, like, Hey, everybody, if you could hit the thumbs up while you are here, <laughs> yeah. because we have over 200 people in here and under 200 thumbs up. Oh, we should have more thumbs is up. Okay. So thumbs is up. Hold on a second. Hmm. There's a... We had a little thing there. That's okay. We had a little, little bobble. Uh-oh. The I'm internet grab... bobbled me. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna into my cad yellow, and I'm going to add some white to that. And I'm going to come here and tap up and down on our center. Just a bit of a highlight there. So you only have that there, and that just creates a little bit of that. My camera was a little slow. I got most of it. Okay. Tapping up and down. Just a little bit there. That's looking good. Now in our stem, I'm going to also come through, and I'm going to kind of take that little yellow-brown. It's almost like an ochre. You could just break and just use ochre if you were just too frustrated. I'm going to come through, and I'm going to add some highlights. The details to some of the stem. Not everywhere, but there are some places that you would see it. And I just want to put some highlights through the stem. Come into my brown here and my black. I didn't even rinse out my brush because it's not that in it's not that important to do that at this stage. I deepen the stem there. Kind of come underneath here. Darken some of the some of the little areas where we're just talking about little shadows coming up. I'm moving along. Am I moving on too fast? No, we have so many. Everyone's giving us thumbs up <laughs> emojis. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. These are good. No, we'll keep doing these. We'll keep doing these because they're good for us to do. They're even good for me. Like even prepping these courses are good for me to do. Kind of coming in and throwing up a little bit of a dark shadow here. Right, because we we want to show the values that are happening, like that. There's a that was a little weird, but I'll paint that later. Okay, now I'm gonna want to rinse out. I'm gonna take a lot more yellow over to my green. The green was made with phthalo green, burnt sienna, and cad yellow. I'm going to come in and I'm going to highlight some. Coming over with a little bit of a highlight. Not my lightest highlight, by the way. By any means. And I'll still leave some of the dark. Yeah. <laughs> 
And you know what I did there? Nope. I rested oh, my hand on the paper and I, I made it. it. Yeah. That's kind of, I've got to let that dry on paper. I can kind of pull it up a little bit, but mostly I just got to let it dry. And then what? Paint white over it. Oh. It doesn't really matter in your sketchbook, but if you're going to photograph it and put it online, you might care. Right. Let's put this here. I'll notice that we're so very much what we had going on in the pencil study. If you decide to take the pencil study all the way to its end, where you really look at values and things, a lot of what you worked out there will come to fruition here. Right? Where you put the lighter colors is maybe the highlight in a leaf. Now, if I come in and I add a little white to this, and even some more yellow. Look at that level. Can you start to see how it moves and twists the leaf? It tells you where on the leaf it's closest to a light source. Again, because a lot of times studio flowers have multiple light sources. And how does this help us in our regular painting? What this does is us seeing that the leaves are multitonal tells us that leaves in our paintings are never just dark or light, are they? They have different colors in them. If I want to come back into my green and brown and yellow and get to a darker green, Come in there. And maybe some of these leaves are not as in as much light, so sometimes I like to come in and darken some to exaggerate it. See how that puts some of them back and some of them forward? All right. That is looking good. And come in and add a little bit of my white to my pink. And I might come into like, uh, let's do it in a new step. We'll just do some finishing touches. Okay, on I'm going to give it a new here. step that. We'll give it the tenth step. Yeah, we'll do ten steps here. So I'm going to come in on my... Leaves that I'm seeing the back of, and I've added a little white over to my mix of quinacridone and cad red, but where it's a little more quinacridone. Because, you know, we can add details to those leaves, even if they are. So the colors in the reference are different than the colors in the, in the live? I don't know. I don't know how you balance the colors. Oh, it could be. <laughs> yeah, it could be that could be that the uh, that we have a, a a little different colors in the reference. No, no, I mean like in in your in oh, your yeah. cameras. Yeah. I don't I, versus like the photograph versus. Yep, it's hard to know there. So there's yeah, and, and you know different mixes each time a little different. So well, every time you do the flowers, there'll be some little differences. Also, I've got the side camera kind of turned down a little bit. That's it's, right, because for the pencil, so, so it's like it's, crazy it's, different. It's, yeah, the, the, like, they're similar here, but yeah, it, it, you know, it looks like that there's a little difference in the... All right, here we go. We're just pulling this forward, right? And now I'm thinking about these petals a bit, kind of shading them. 
things come through and you work your And again, I highly suggest that you, you know, grab photos of different cosmos. Sometimes they're more purple. So for me, my colors are, I write down what I do and I just use the same colors again and again. But sometimes like online or photographs or it's dark or it's light. Not a lot of control there. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of white and yellow. a little bit again let's get into the white we're nearly done and you just play with this until what you feel you have is a nice botanical rendering illustration on your page and what you should have from that practice is a better understanding of how we face the flowers, how we orient them, how we paint them, draw them. Maybe a little more cad red. Quinacridone magenta. A little bit under here. You're there, guys. So hopefully you figured out how to, uh, hopefully you figured out how to face your petals, how to curl your petals, how to face your centers, how to put stems in front of or behind leaves, how to wind leaves over, how to value, how to control your pencil line, those kinds of things. I, I'm hoping that's what you're going to come away with. Definitely, definitely on this. And I hope you enjoyed this sort of like little technique tune up. I think the yeah. last thing that I do want to do when I'm looking at this is I want to take a little bit of white. And just for value, I'm going to come in and kind of tap that there. Just kind of give it a little sparkly highlight. Does that make sense? A little yeah. bit of a sparkly highlight. Because I like that. It looks good there on the flower. As you do. As you do. Centers of flowers are always more interesting than we think. So uh, next time we do this, it is going to be feathers. And we're going to just paint a bunch of different feathers. Until we're feel very confident in the, feather the study. form of feathers and yeah you know just like even within a single feather how does it uh highlight and where is its iridescence and how do we do that and what if it's a fantasy color those kinds of things just really always help us i think pull together and uh um oh, man, i'm having a whole thing why I don't know. My brain We're, just... You know, I love that you're doing all of these studies on these. And that's what people are been enjoying more, most about this, is that you're putting these together in very articulate, well-put-together booklets. Until the end where I went... Bah. And then you were just like, you know what? I have so much to teach. I just lost track of what I'm teaching. <laughs> that's what but you it's did. True. Sometimes I have so much to teach, I lose track of what I'm teaching. Um, I would love you guys to paint your own. You're welcome to share this in the Art Sherpa official group, um, your Cosmos Flower Studies. Um, uh, definitely, definitely think about just going around your garden and photographing things that you see there and seeing if you can't put them in your sketchbook. Again, if you were wondering what I was working in, this is what uh, the sketchbook I was working in. I do really like these. I hope to have them in the store. Um, as soon as that's open, I hope to have those there. Uh, but you're right, Canson will be okay, and and Strathmore will be okay. Um, there's some other good stuff that's out there. Uh, I haven't worked with every single pad of paper, but I think the big main companies, you know, you can you can fairly much trust on that. And I do think anything at a Bristol, a Bristol would do this okay. So you just want to fill up, fill up a sketchbook now. Yeah. Sometimes your acrylic paintings stick to the pages and um, I don't have any on me. So I'm going to just have to say the words 
when this were all the way finished, I could use Dorland's wax. Um, D O R L A N D S. You can find it at uh -huh. art stores to seal the page so it won't stick to the other page. That's how you address the acrylic. I learned that from from people who do art journals. Isn't that fantastic? That does. It is fantastic. All right, you guys, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye bye. <laughs>